Uh, as introduced, my name is Matthew Woodwards and I'm the Managing Director of uh, Affinity Leads. We're a directly authorised lead generation company. We focus uh, mainly in financial services. I myself have been uh, involved in the sales and marketing of financial products since 2007, so I've seen the, the, uh, the tale of the good times and I've seen the bad times and, uh, and um, sort of lived to, lived to tell the tale, so it's been an interesting journey. Um, we specialise in direct marketing, so uh, we're, we're not a brand building company, we don't, don't go out and buy ads on you, uh, for you, we, we sell leads uh, and you take those leads and you turn those leads um, into business. Just so I can understand my audience a bit, hands up, who buys leads now? Who's, who's interested in leads? Who thinks lead gen's a scam and they would never touch it? It's nice to see someone's honest. Um, to start with, I thought we'd explore um, where digital is at the moment in regards to advertising. So last year uh, in the UK, £6 billion pounds was spent on online advertising. Uh, £14 billion pounds of business was done off the back of just lead generation and affiliate marketing. Uh, and uh, during 2013, returns for lead generation and, and affiliate marketing were running uh, along the lines of £14 return to the advertiser for every pound uh, that was invested in it. Is there anyone, anyone here that's got marketing that returns better than 14 to 1? No, I didn't think so. So the point I'm making is, uh, you know, the days of the yellow pages, the days of ads in the newspaper, et cetera, et cetera. Those days are over. Uh, the internet's gonna continue and continue and continue to take over marketing budgets, and if your business isn't in that space, then you stand to lose. Uh, why should you be in lead generation? Uh, I think online marketing now has become a blunt instrument. Uh, whereas in days gone by, you could get into the market quite easily, you could get into it with small spends, you could get into it without really uh, knowing what it was and, and how to do it. Now it's more like uh, TV advertising, newspaper advertising in the sense that you need to have uh, a marketing budget in the millions if you want to compete with the price comparison sites, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you need to have skills, so that means you either need to pay another company to do it on your behalf, or you need to hire those people into your company, and that not every firm wants to do that. Generally speaking, a firm wants to concentrate on what they do, and I doubt that marketing is what a lot of you guys do, not for your own services anyway. A lead, on the other hand, is a real-time engaged customer. That customer's gone through a process where it's been explained to them what's going to happen. Broker's going to call you, for example. They've given their details. It's not just uh, the details in regards to their name and their phone number. If it's a financial services product, they've been asked, what do you want? Life insurance, how much cover do you want? Is it for you? Is it for your partner? Is it for both of you? What sort of, uh, how long do you want it? Term, level, etc., etc. So lead generation, you should be in it because it's driving those customers directly into your business. But what it's also allowing you to do is compete in areas you're just not going to touch. The truth is, you're not going to comp I hope there's no one in here from Money Supermarket, but you're not going to compete with Money Supermarket. Uh, you, you're just not going to do. They'll, they'll, they'll spend money uh, and, and they won't worry if they lose it because they're looking at the lifetime uh, value of the customer. Whereas uh, coming to a firm like ours or coming to another lead generator, it gives you access to those markets without having to commit budgets that may not be available to you. Uh, that's where the market is, that's why you should be in it. The other thing I wanted to do is try uh, and, in the time I've got available, sort of debunk some of the mysteries that are in lead generation. I mean, the comment, the first question I get asked by anyone who wants to buy leads is, where do you get those leads from? And it's a brilliant question because to effectively work a lead and effectively get business out of that lead, you need to understand the journey that that customer's gone through between logging on and arriving on your desk. It's vital you understand where in the buy cycle they are, 
if they're right at the, e at the beginning, they need a different treatment than if they're right at the end, ready to transact. You also need to understand the marketing message that customer has been given. Have they been told they're going to get a quote? Have they been told they're going to speak to a broker? What, what have they been told? You need to be armed uh, with that information before you start engaging with that customer. And I would personally say or recommend any lead gen firm that's not prepared to show you exactly the media that's being bought to generate the lead, exactly the path that that person's going on to reach you, and, and, the, and the sales messaging that person's been given before they get to you, I would steer clear of that because there is absolutely no reason why that information should stay uh, shrouded. Or if there is a reason, it's a negative reason. Uh, I wanted to give you uh, a couple of examples of some of the advertising we use to generate leads. So one of the most common is uh, search marketing on Google. So we spend um, a lot of money on Google generating leads. So when you think about search marketing, that person at that point has identified the need. They've gone past the point where they th that there's a slight interest. They've identified the need or they've decided to buy the product. So that they're, not, they're online either getting information or looking for someone to buy the product on. The, the uh, frame of mind the customer's in is transactional. So the reason I point this out is that's what, you should understand that that's how your lead's been generated and that's how you should treat the customer. They're, they're in a transactional uh, frame of mind. Don't muck around with them. If they want a quote, give them a quote. Give, give the customer uh, what they want. To parallel that, and I think it's a complete parallel, is display advertising. So, Display advertising is just ads on websites, buying ad space on websites. You might not know that that's what it's called, but you've certainly seen ads on websites. Now, I think it's obvious. You can see that the customer at this point is in a completely different frame of mind. They may not have identified uh, a need. They may not be interested in the product. They may be coming back because they've thought about it in the past and they've seen the ad and that's re-triggered uh, themselves, but essentially they're, they're generally speaking going to be early in the buy cycle. So you need to, as, a, as an advisor, you need to address that. They're early in the buy cycle, so instead of saying, let's give you a quote, let's give you a quote, let's give you a quote, let's identify a need. It's life insurance. Well, this is why you need life insurance. Uh, you also need to nurture that person. They're not ready to buy. You know, you might need to engage with this person for two weeks, for three weeks, for three months before you actually get the sale. So the reason why I point this out is not really to educate you about online marketing, it's to show that it's important that you understand what it is you're buying so that you can get the most out of it. The last thing we want is to generate good leads that cost good money and have you call us up and tell us the leads don't work because you're not working the leads properly. Uh, so. Understanding customer journey, understanding the path the customer's been on, understanding what that customer's been sold are key to getting the best out of your leads. Um, apart from that, generally speaking, working leads. Generally speaking, we probably see 20% um, of our customers work leads well and the other 80% don't. And the 20% that work leads well, funnily enough, really like us and get a return, and the 80% that don't, don't get a return and think that we're trying to rip them off. Some of these things seem obvious, and every single day we talk to people about these things, but I'm going to go over them again because clearly they, uh, they, they don't get through. The first thing, if you're buying an internet lead, call the lead straight away. The person's online, they're looking around. If you remember back to the other slide with the, with the Google advertisements, there's another 15 ads there. If you don't call them, then they're lost, they're gone. We do our own lead generation to generate our own business. Within our office, within business hours, if a lead's not called in 60 seconds, then I want to know why. And, it sh and, it's, and the only reason why it should be is because there's too many other leads being called. There's no excuse for, 15 minutes is the absolute longest you want to lead before you call a lead. Two hours, three hours, the next day, waste of time. This is different, of course, if it's a weekend lead, then the person's not going to expect to be called at 9pm on Sunday. But if you're buying leads during business hours, call those leads. And if you haven't got the resource to call them, pause your, pause your campaign. Don't, don't let the leads stack up. Most legion firms aren't going to for, force you to keep buying. Uh, again, we've gone over the customer journey. It's vital you understand each lead you buy should be tracked if the, if the person you're buying it off back to a campaign and you should be made aware of that campaign, the message the customer's had, and that's where you start. 
hello, you've just been on Google, et cetera, et cetera. And your sales team should be ready to deal with that. A good sales team should be anyway. Uh, CRM. We still have big companies spending thousands and thousands of pounds with us every single month who don't have any formal CRM system in place. Excel spreadsheets, notes scribbled on pads. I mean, the, there's guys out there right now that sell excellent CRM systems. I have nothing to do with them. I'm not, I'm not giving them a bump, by the way, but I've, I've seen their systems because we've seen their systems through, through our customers. But they sell it on a per license basis. There's no hardware cost. It's a hosted service. You don't have to worry about it. It's, it's on the internet. You can buy it one license at a time. If you don't have a good CRM system in place, I, I think all of your business is going to struggle, but certainly lead gen is. And stand back and take a look. Every time I say that to someone, no, oh, we've got a good lead, we've, our CRM's excellent, our CRM's excellent. Go and have a look at some companies that their business is selling CRM's. Go back and have a look at yours. If yours is just as good or better, great. But if it isn't, go and try it. Because these, it's these little things that turn lead generation campaigns from, from loss making into profit making. Um, sell yourself, sell your brand, sell your service. You know, Make the customer understand why going to go compare and punching their stuff in and getting a list of stuff coming out that doesn't really serve their needs is not the right way. Tell them what you do. Sell yourself. You know, push yourself out to that customer and make them feel that they, why they should engage in your service. I mean, this stuff sounds easy, but we see it time and time and time and time again. You know, really engage that customer with what you do and they'll engage with you. And then they're a lifetime customer. This is financial services, right? There's not many companies that look at a customer as one transaction. You should, you've really always got to remember, uh, engage that customer in your, in your service and nurture your leads. You don't hear this enough in Legion, but you can't, it's not good enough to call up a customer, oh, yeah, not really, yeah, maybe, maybe, okay, okay, do you want to quote, uh, uh, uh put down the phone, chuck the lead in the bin. If you're going to burn leads like that, I hope you've got a lot of money because you're not going to uh, get the value out of them. You've got to nurture those customers. Some, if it's a mortgage lead, you might need to nurture that customer for 12 months before it, before it comes out. If it's, even, if it's a life insurance lead, it, you know, it may take time to get that customer out. I'm not talking about ringing that customer every three minutes every day until they tell you that they're not going to deal with you, but engage with them. Send them emails, engage them in your company, use your CRM system to keep in touch with them. Once you've sold them a product, sell them another product next year or the year after that. And nurture leads, engage with them, don't give up with them. At the end of the day, stop thinking about them as a lead is probably the best way. They're not a lead, they're a customer, they're a person. Keep, keep in touch with them. Right, and very quickly, uh, future trends in lead gen or, or areas where we're going to go. One of the interesting metrics at the moment, uh, and online and particularly in search, is in financial services now, we're seeing upwards of 40% of searches made online going via a mobile device. Mobile's been a long time coming, people have been talking about it for years, but it's firmly, firmly here now. People are using their mobile phones uh, to engage uh, on the internet. They're not going to fill out forms on their mobile phones, and why should they? It's, it's, a, it's a phone. They, if they want to be serviced, they can push a button and be serviced right then and there. So click to call mobile advertising. That's going to be uh, a real growth area for us, and I think a massive growth area uh, in the industry. But again, that's something you need to understand. A person who clicks a phone number on their phone is going to be different to someone on a desktop that fills in a form. You guys need to know that and you need to service the customer as such. Um, enhanced leads. So what I mean by enhanced leads, uh, some operations are better set up to handle leads than others. A one-man band is going to struggle to service 10 leads that arrive on his desk all at once, whereas a big tally-based tally uh, sales operation uh, is set up to handle that. So enhanced leads are where uh, the customer has, has gone further down the process before they arrive uh, at you. And not everyone can do this because it, we're really ste stepping into regulated territory here, but the customer's had to double opt-in. For example, they've had, to, they've had a text message sent to them and they've got to reply to that text message before they get classified as a lead. Uh, the customer's been called and, uh, by, by the lead generator and had their interest confirmed. Um, it, any number of things to basically cut down the workload for a business where they're not set up to uh, service those leads within 60 seconds, which is basically the golden rule. Um, 
and live chat, I think uh, this is quite an interesting one, and we're certainly going to invest in it. Traditionally, live chat online has been used as a uh, customer service tool, really. So, um, you know, I'm sure most of you know what live chat is and have used it, um, and it's and it's really excellent. But we um, we don't see why that can't be used with lead generation. And the the excellent thing uh, with live chat, it allows the customer to engage with you without taking that step of giving your, their personal details, without putting their number in, their age, their address, et cetera, et cetera. They can do it behind a, a, a veil of secrecy, essentially. But if you're good and you start telling them why they, why they need to speak to you, they're, they're soon going to come around and give that information. So that's, um, that's another area where we're going to be, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, over the next 12 months. Um, my contact details are up there. Uh, scribble them down by all means if you want to contact me. We've got a stand out there and uh, the guys are on it and manning it. Uh, we'd love you to come up and talk to you. Um, we're always looking for new products. Uh, if we don't do the product now, that doesn't mean we won't do the product. New ideas. Um, so I encourage you to do that and we'll have a Q&A session at the end. Thank you.